Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for my episode of Collaboration Station, a collaborative project put together by Matt Lown and featuring the likes of Matt Lown, Marcus House, the Beardy Penguin, Scott Manley, Bob Fitch, and a bunch of other people who probably really hate me for not saying their names. But I'm sorry to all of you, there's like 14 people in this. Um, but anyway, what are we launching? Well, I'm a little worried that this station is going to have its funding slashed, so the first thing we're going to do is is launch our payload on a reusable rocket. It lands much like a Falcon 9. If you haven't seen my channel before, which is a relatively high possibility, you won't know, but I very much love reusable rockets, especially Falcon 9 type things. I use them all the time in my series, so I've prepared myself one here. Quite a big rocket. It looks sort of Saturn 5 with its five engines at the bottom. Those are the um, Vector space shuttle engines with their uh, with their thrust vectoring turned down a bit so it's not too crazy. And then a big upper stage and we've got a big payload there which I'll explain in a bit. It also is part of not getting our funding cut. Um, although you've probably guessed what it is from the title. Yes, it is a space laser because if the government decides to cut off funding, well, I'm gonna cut them with a laser. Uh, so yeah, I think this uh, station should stay, uh, stay in an orbit for a while, because if it's not, we'll just fire up the laser, and uh, everyone will die. Ha, I'm pretty evil. I bet they're wishing they hadn't invited me into this uh, collaboration right now. Anyway, we've got to land this first stage to prove that it is a very efficient space station. A bunch of people have used SSTOs and using reusable rockets. They're going to be super happy about it. They're going to be like, oh, look at this. We don't need to, we don't need to, you know, tempt fate with that laser. So we're going to come back through the atmosphere, burning up, you know, pretty intensely. But it's, uh, we're going slowly enough that it's not too damaging. Just rather beautiful. And we're going to land on a single engine. You saw just then that I activated the extra fuel tank and shut down some engines with an action group. And now we just have one, which we're firing up now to slow us down a little bit. Something like a boost back, not a boost back burn, because we didn't actually boost back. I rarely actually boost back to the KSC because I'd need more fuel. And in my um, in my series where I'm doing uh, career stuff, I, I don't want to. I just want a high capability rocket that gets most of the money back. But yeah, we're going to slow down to a reasonable. Um, Velocity so we can pull the parachutes because landing like hover slamming manually is pretty difficult I have uh, said it's that at some point I would like to write some KOS code that um, Lands rockets on their engines by itself because that'd be pretty cool But for now we're just gonna pull the chutes and slow down We've also got some air brakes on there, but they didn't do a ton But yeah, we're actually probably gonna be able to land without the engine um, But I thought I would just fire it up anyway so that we uh, touch down as slowly as possible and definitely get this back Anyway, back in orbit, we're going to activate these solar panels on the space laser. All of these solar panels and things to couple because we don't want to add too many parts to the station. And I'm not going to lie, I did add a fair few parts um, by, you know, building this, like, surrounding bit of the laser. It's a lot smaller than the original one I designed, but, uh, you know, still not tiny. Anyway, so now we've got the uh, second stage. We're going to bring that back to by uh, deorbiting. You'll notice in the staging, however, I forgot to put parachutes on this, so... We kind of might have a hard time landing, because I very rarely do entirely propulsive landings on Kerbin, because it's actually kind of difficult, especially when you don't have a ton of fuel. Or well, I do have a lot of fuel in this stage, because it was a very light payload, actually. So anyway, this will be landing at the KSE, unlike the first stage, because, let's face it, I'm lazy. And yeah! So we just have to enter the atmosphere, hopefully not explode with the fire, pass over these mountains, and probably do a few more burns to make sure we actually land at the KSC, which luckily I have the liberty to do today, because I have a huge amount of fuel left. But it would be nice to have a little more, because it's always nice to have more fuel. But anyway, so it looks like we're actually going to come in and land at the KSC, which is pretty impressive. It's not super easy to do this, but as, we, um, as we're about to touch down, we're slowing down fairly well, but I shut the engine off just too early, lose the engine, it flips, we also lose everything else, and we, yeah. So we might need that space laser after all to secure our funding. They're probably like, yeah, we could have done a better job saving the money on that rocket tape, and I'm like, okay man, poke the bear, P poke the bear, I've got a space laser, and I'm pretty sure Danny's in this collaboration, so he'll destroy the world. So be careful, man. Anyway, so firing up the third stage, which is using some of these, um, out, uh, what are those engines called? The radial engines? I don't know the name of them, but anyway, it's using that to head on to the moon. So we're just gonna do the burn, speed up most of it, because it's kind of a long burn. It's not a super light space laser. It's not that heavy, actually. It's actually only a few tons. Um, I think like seven? Anyway, so we're gonna bring our periapsis down to the level, to the uh, orbital plane of the uh, of the space station, and we're gonna go dock on there. It'll be rather beautiful. 
Um, that's looking pretty good. We're a little inclined, but we'll fix that later, and that's fine. So anyway, let's set off into four times time acceleration, because this takes a little while, because I come in at a slightly weird time. Anyway, there's the moon saying hello, being like, oh, hey, space laser, please don't use that on me. Uh, <laughs> of course, a space laser is fairly appropriate for me. I'm not sure if you've watched my channel too much, but... Um, but I'm a, I'm a fairly, um, a lot of the stuff I do involves violence and KSP. You know, the BD Armory mod, one of my favorites. Anyway, so we're just doing a little bit of planning here with a couple of maneuver nodes. One of them just steps the f um, orbit forward uh, one time so that we can plan our intersect two in two orbits time, which will require a quick retrograde burn, I want to say, looks like. Because we're in, we're not that far from the station, but yeah, anyway. So we're just going to do that. We're using RCS to do all of the uh, articulation because I forgot to put a reaction wheel on this because I'm sort of allergic to reaction wheels, you know? I, I'm always like, oh, the probe body has enough torque, and it's like, no, no, it doesn't. Anyway, so in one more orbit's time, we will catch up with the station. Well, the station will catch up with us, um, and we'll go and dock to it, which may be pretty difficult because I think currently it's about 900 parts. You can see time is standing still, even at four times time accelerate. And we're going to maneuver on in, which may take a little while because, well, we're still a way off, and... Um, the docking port I want to get is on the other side because there's only one giant docking port left. I've put a couple of extra docking ports on this. I don't really know why because I think I'm like third to last, so they're probably not going to use it. But the rules did say you had to put a bunch of docking ports on there, and I didn't want to, you know, break the rules. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so you can see the station there looking rather beautiful silhouetted against the moon. It is pretty impressive. It's about 900 parts, and after this it'll be 900 and something. I did manage to keep it after a thousand, which is good. I'm sorry, Sh um, I think Shadow Zone and Danny, I, I, I yeah. Um, it's not that many, though. I think it's under 80 parts, actually, which is pretty impressive. But I know some people did some smaller modules. But there, no, there were no exact rules on parts. But uh, I did have a slightly nicer looking space laser, but it was just, it was a lot, it was a lot of parts. Anyway. So we're just going to head on over, fly over the station, scare the hell out of all the Kerbals, being like, dude, is that a space laser? Is that guy bringing a space laser? Why would he do that? Um, but yeah, it looks somewhat space lasery. I wasn't really sure exactly how space lasers looked. I had this nicer idea with like a bunch of rings and a thing through it, but it didn't really work. And this looked fairly, I don't know, like some kind of laser. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not an amazing designer. Some of the modules on this station look really amazing, and mine looks just okay. Um, but yeah, so we found our docking port on the back of some giant fuel tank and just next to, I think someone brought a bunch of ore back from EVE because, I don't know, they hate themselves. Uh, but that was really impressive. I've forgotten exactly who that was, but that's really impressive. I don't think I've ever even returned from EVE, uh, which I should do because I reckon I can. I, just haven't, I haven't tried. I could totally do that. But I very much doubt I could bring that much ore back from EVE. Um, the uh, station at this point was running at about 10 frames a second, which is impressive actually, I was impressed. Good job KSP 1.2 and good job Intel for making my processor. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe it was a little less now that we had a laser, but yeah, not too bad. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot of really massive modules. I'm, I appear to be on the industrial end. On the other end there's like a bunch of nice stuff like uh, uh, habitation and a cafe and a DJ booth, apparently, which is pretty cool. I believe that was the work of Scott Manley. Um, a space shuttle, lots of nice stuff, and I'm docking on the fueling end and the ore delivery end because we don't want people just sitting in their armchairs, you know, having fun, look out, being like, is that a laser? Nah, we don't want them to think about that. You know, this is just a last resort. If they cut funding, they'll be like, I don't think so. I think we like this station. Although I am a little worried because Danny's coming. And I don't know what he's doing, it's it's a secret at this point, but um, I don't think a space laser will stop him, because it's only a mortal weapon. Um, and if you don't know, Danny uh, is, uh, you know, notorious for sort of breaking stuff. Anyway, here we are, docked on. It's looking rather beautiful, and we just got to maneuver it a bit. I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out the controls with the low frame rate. The f footage is way sped up, so, you, so it's not terribly painful. But um, I was just reorientating it. And eventually we get docked on, and then the space shuttle explodes. And I was like, oh, I feel kind of bad about that. Let's reload and do that again. I don't know, spontaneous explosions. It's a really deadly laser. It doesn't even have to fire to kill stuff. But anyway, we reorientate so that we can get a slightly nicer docking and hope that the uh, shuttle doesn't explode because you don't want to break people's stuff, even though it was totally just Danny already in the game, I bet. Um, breaking things preemptively, retroactive game breaking. Anyway, that's Doc Dong. Nothing has exploded, and it's looking beautiful. So we're gonna uh, get rid of all the things, ditch those solar panels and uh, RCS ports because we don't want to add any extra parts, and get rid of the tug, which will. I was gonna turn it around and deorbit it, but um, 
I, I, I don't know, it has no uh, probe on it, so that was an oversight, but it'll just drift away and we can delete it at some point. But anyway, let's get a good look at this laser. So after warping around a bit, I fire up the lights again, and you can see the lights on my laser. It's green around the outside and then obviously red at the death bit. I guess this is currently firing. It doesn't actually fire anything, but it looks pretty formidable. It's got that little red tube, which looks pretty cool until you look right up it and see the light. But anyway, let's get a good look at this station. There's a lot of cool modules, and I'd like to take a quick look at them. We've got the giant fueling module and the uh, ore module that returned from EVE. We've got a little space shuttle there. We've got, I think, fuel and some little jetpacks, which are awesome. We've got habitation up there, that amazing habitation ring. Over here, I believe we've got the DJ booth or radio station, I think, um, from Mr. Manley. We've got a little cafe there where people are sitting. Uh -huh. We've got some RCS stores. Uh, we've got the um, space fire there by Penguin, that's pretty cool. I don't know who put up every module because it's hard to keep track, but, the, but Penguin put up a space fire. And then I was like, hmm, I don't really want to be in the dark, so I start, start rotating the space station. This was temporary, by the way, I never meant to uh, leave it rotated because that would be pretty shitty, but I wanted to get a good look just for the video. Stuff's flexing a little bit, but I'm thinking, ah, it's fine, that's gonna be fine. Um, and yeah, and now we can get a nice look at the space laser. Look at it, it's beautiful. And then I time warp and then everything explodes. And I was like, oh shit, I broke it again. So yeah, I broke the space station twice unintentionally because, I don't know, I'm, I'm a bad person. Anyway, I did qu quick load. I didn't want to wreck the station and be like, sorry guys, I'm a shitty person. But anyway, I get it in the dark so we can see all the lights and take a look at the station. And it's looking beautiful. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you will watch the next episode, which is going to be done by Shadow Zone. There is a link to the playlist at the end of this video, along with a link to the next video, which is by Shadow Zone. And yeah, it's a pretty awesome station. And a big thank you to Matt Lamb for setting all of this up. This was a lot of fun, and it looks so awesome. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.